Hi, I'm Neil Sean and welcome to London's famous Denmark Street. Now it's hard to believe that this particular street was full of all the hit makers, songwriters, pianists, anything that you could want back in the day. Today it still sort of slightly resembles a bit of a, a music emporium with many shops. But this was the place that you came to if you wanted a hit record. And above me in all these rooms here and here were lots of songwriters along with pianists who were beavering away all day making the hit records that we so adore even today. But today I want to focus on one particular song that has stayed in the public conscious for decades now. Well, since the 1930s. What am I talking about? The one and only, the very brilliant Sally, made famous by the equally fabulous Miss Gracie Fields. The story of Sally actually started in an East End pub, simply because the songwriter Harry Leon had already got the basic tune, but not the lyrics. But it was here where he finally came to fruition. Well, actually, at a pub on the corner, and then he came here to meet up with two other friends. They sat down and composed the song that we now all love. What's interesting though is Harry could have become, and should have become, a multi-millionaire from that one song. Many others did. But for Harry, he decided that it wasn't really that good and he didn't think it would become a hit. So he sold his share for a mere 30 pounds and it was a song that continues to be a mega hit even today. Harry was the most unlikely songwriter. Nothing at all what you would imagine. He wore a cloth cap, a muffler, and smoked a lot of wood vines. But what he did do was learn the craft of a simple sing-along song. That was all thanks to his 12 years in the Royal Navy, or as they called it then, a merchant seaman. But Harry, when he came back off that, decided he wanted to expand. He could play piano, although he couldn't read a note of music and he couldn't really pick up the natural tune. But that's what became a very successful songwriter. The other thing about Harry is that everything he made, played, all started in the key of D. And Sally originally was called Gypsy Sweetheart after a girl that he'd met over in Cuba. He'd had this song banging around in his head for quite a while. But then he met these two other pivotal people right here on London's Tin Pan Alley. So upon arriving back here in Denmark Street, Harry teamed up with Leo Towers and publisher Will Haynes. Now they liked the tune, but they thought something was missing. So they tried the title differently to Mary Mary Quite Contrary. That didn't work either. So they, were, so they were batting around upstairs in a room here when somebody came up with the title that we now all love and enjoy today. But what happened next really was pivotal in making the song the international worldwide hit that it became. There was another problem though. They got stuck on the word beguiling. Well, what rhymes with smiling? Another man upstairs in the room, Percy Edgar, popped his head round the door and actually said, well, smiling. Now the lyric was complete and they all decided the only person that they felt could make this an international hit was someone who was appearing at one of London's biggest variety theatres that week, the Metropolitan Edgware Road. And who was that star? None other than Miss Gracie Fields. So they arrived at the Metropolitan Edgware Road. Now it's hard to imagine today that anybody could get into an international star's dressing room and present a song. But that's what could happen way back in the early 30s. Wouldn't happen today, would it, with somebody like Barbara Streisand or Michael Bublé? Now, Gracie Fields was pestered by many, many songwriters, and some she took in, some she didn't. However, Harry took in his composition, 
and he sang it to her. Now you've got to remember he's a bit of a cockney guy, not the best brilliant singer if you like, and singing in the tune of D. But she sort of listened to it and said, well, I don't think it's really for me, and sent him on his way. He thought no more of it, went back into Edgware Road and went to look for the tune. What happened next was a very pivotal moment in the change of fortunes, not just for Gracie Fields, but for Harry too. So then what happened was this, Gracie Fields then took a call in her dressing room. Yes, it was that posh at the Met. And basically she was told that her new movie was ready to film. They were looking for a song and they told her the title of the movie. Of course, instantly she realized that she just let the song that could make the movie a success go through the door. So she contacted a stage door messenger who shot down the road and managed to persuade Harry to come back to her dressing room at the Metropolitan. They had a quick chat and, you know, she said, look, let me listen to it again and bring a piano, all that sort of stuff. So consequently, they did play Gracie the song and she decided that she'd found the perfect song. You see, that's what I love about Gracie Fields. Not only was she a huge international star on radio, records, movies and stage, but she could actually pick out what was going to be good for her career. Then what happened was Harry decided he didn't really think it was going to be a hit and he was always in need of some money so he said well look I tell you what I'll sell you my share for £30. Now £30 in 1931 was a lot of money but it wasn't really that much money when you consider what the track then went on to make around the world for years. Sally was the song that became so associated with Gracie she could never appear on stage or really on TV without singing it. But for Harry, all that remained was some recognition and of course his £30. Now a nice additional story to this wonderful tale about Gracie Fields and of course a hit song Sally is another legend, the late great Sir Roger Moore who I was lucky enough to interview a couple of years ago. Now many fans may not know that Sir Roger does have a Gracie Fields connection. That's simply because way back in 1956 for the Goodson Playhouse for NBC, Sir Roger and of course the brilliant Gracie played Miss Marple on TV for the very first time. This even precurses the legend that is Margaret Rutherford. Now Sir Roger spoke very warmly about Sir Gracie and said to me that he thought she was a brilliant artiste simply because he said she was so giving. He of course had got to Hollywood at that point, he'd already been in a movie with Lana Turner but he said that next to Lana Turner Gracie Fields was a far warmer character and a beautiful person inside and out. Gracie though also liked to make sure that Roger shone and as she said look love when I'm on screen nobody's going to be looking at me they're all going to be staring at you. Now there is a copy and Sir Roger did have a copy of this particular vintage Miss Marple. It's not been shown on TV since and that's simply because the people that own it have no plans now to put it out on DVD. And a little footnote also, another co-star in that particular episode was none other than the Hollywood star Jessica Tandy. But Sir Roger Moore said that he had a lot of fond memories of working with the late great Dame Gracie Fields. And Roger knew a thing or two about divas. After all, he was married to another legend that was, of course, Dorothy Squires. So that was the story of Sally. And what was fascinating was it all started here, right here on this street. Now, if you want to check out Denmark Street, it really is a place of history. Even look online, you see lots of pictures of stars coming down here. It was a great publicity coup, actually, to have people like Frankie Vaughan, the Beverly Sisters, trotting down looking for a song. And, of course, it got you in the papers because, who knows, you may have just found your next big hit. Now, to conclude the story of Sally, Will Haynes, the publisher of Cameo Music, went on to co-collaborate on another big hit by Gracie, of course, the very famous, the biggest Aspidistra in the world another song that we all enjoy singing. I hope you've enjoyed our short film today to look back at one of my favourite biggest music hall and variety songs right here in Denmark Street in the heart of London. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget to comment, like and share and spread the word. We need to keep variety alive. I'm Neil Sean and I'll see you next time we venture out into London's capital or across the UK looking at some of my favourite moments in the world of show business. Thank you so much for watching.